Link ASMR. Really? Uh, I mean, uh, hey, it sounds that. great. I'm not doing that. I saw f I f was watching fucking Amaranth yesterday, and it was like the weirdest shit. She put like lotion on her hands, and she was massaging the ear, and she was whispering in the mic. That shit was weird. Whoa! How long did you say you watched that for? To completion or? <laughs> nah, I watched it for like ten minutes. I wasn't. I was watching. I was watching it with somebody else. Hey man, cut the OBS on, man. Cut the OBS on real quick. I mean, it's already on. We already recorded. Oh, oh, you're learning. <laughs> okay, okay. You hit the record button, or? Buddy, we've been recording for like two minutes now. Oh my God, I love the way you work, my man. Congratulations. Oh, did you have a, a chance to upload the the other video to the Patreon? No, nah, we didn't get to the portion of uh, editing gameplay, so. Oh, okay, okay. Did yeah. you record the gameplay? Yeah, like I you did. said you were. I, I, oh, okay. I already did all. all everything's recorded and shit. I got to do the uh, intro. Though. Okay, okay, uh, <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So, how's your week been, my man? Uh, it's been the same. I've just oh. been chilling. Nice, nice. We get any uh, any new graphics work done? You been working on thumbnails? What you been working on, man? I know you are cooking up something. Nah, I was getting gameplay, but I think it. I don't know if it's the best because my shit was tweaking. Who's watching I was gameplay? Playing. I don't know. Do you watch gameplay when you listen to... You don't even listen to podcasts on YouTube, do you? Well, I do, but... Uh, gameplay, yeah, I do look at it sometimes. Mm, okay, okay. <clears throat> I'm going to throw some Nier Automata gameplay in the background for uh, the next video. All right, well, um, let me talk about my week. Uh... <laughs> nice. So, when we, so, so for context, if you didn't watch the end of the last one, uh, uh, basically what happened is Jay died in the middle or died at the end, thankfully, <laughs> of the Super Jet special episode that'll be coming out, uh, obviously before oh, this. I, I had 10 more minutes. I had 10 more minutes in me though. I, that's the thing. I, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I remember I was like, damn, I wanted to talk for a few more minutes. I, I don't rem I think it was, I think it was something about Saints Row. Either yeah, that or we got off that. I was ready to talk about the, uh, I was going to pivot over to the Last of Us remake. Oh, yeah. Uh, We're talking about Borderlands yeah. 3, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, oh, see, now it's coming back. Now it's coming back. Uh, I don't want to rehash the old uh, yeah, conversation. Yeah, but we were already at like an hour or something, so. Yeah, it was, a great, it was a great conversation. Great, great episode. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. They're getting better and better, man. Uh, so how's the bathtub? You know? Sorry. The bathtub <laughs> is fantastic, man. Um, honestly, so I was... Uh, you know, I, I watch a lot of, uh, I consume a lot of Jordan Peterson's content, um, mm -hmm. Joe Rogan, uh, Logan Paul. Um, I, there was also another fitness podcast I was listening to that was saying that uh, it's very good for your body to, uh, it's good for your, not your cortisol, because that's the stress uh, hormone. It's good for basically like your body healing sitting in like a sauna for like 30 minutes a week or something like that, I think was the statistic. And it's supposed to help increase your, um, your immune system and all of these other really, really good benefits as well as ice baths. So, um, obviously I can't have access to ice cause you know, I don't have any electricity, um, which we're on day five now of no electricity. Um, I got the bathroom outlet to work. So the bathroom outlet is the only outlet in my entire apartment that works. So I have an extension cable that comes out of the bathroom uh, and it gives me three optional plugs. Um, so instead of plugging in the refrigerator, because at that point it was like already three days too late, there was no point in me turning the refrigerator on. Uh, mm. What's in there is gone. Um, spoiled, rotten, destroyed, all of it. I wouldn't be surprised if I opened it up and there's a meth lab in there. Um, but I did get the internet working. Um, so I have Wi-Fi in my apartment. Uh, I have one light that works. Um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, my phone charger <laughs> and that's it. And honestly, this isn't the worst situation I've ever been in. Like, let me, let me just establish that, that because there was a point, uh, I guess I'm kind of outing it now, but I mean, it's plenty of time and space in between. So when, when Heavenly moved out of our apartment, uh, and I wasn't able to secure a new place to live. We still had like two months left of the lease. Right. And he was like, oh, okay, well, I'm just gonna, you know, pay my half for the two months or whatever. 
Uh, so I didn't have the money to do that because, you know, I had gotten laid off my job and then like I was doing Uber and Lyft and Postmates and DoorDash full time, which means I was out of the house like 15 hours a day. So um, it got to a point where the electric bill was super high from the previous month when he was there and he didn't pay his portion when he left, which was like the electric bill was like 300 and some odd dollars. And I was like, I don't have it. Like, and I hit him up. I was like, Hey, are you going to pay your half of it? And he had changed his number already. So I was like, okay, Damn. all right, well, I guess, I mean, I already told him, owed him two grand, which, you know, I need to pay him back that money anyway, uh, just for sheer principle. So there was no way he was going to, you know, no matter how I reached out to him, he wasn't going to, you know, pay for that half. So the electricity just shut off. So for two months, I was in that hot ass apartment in the fucking desert, like, no AC, no fans, no electricity, nothing. Not a single outlet working in the entire apartment. Um, and I made it through that. So uh, I couldn't keep food in the house. I was eating out every single day. I wasn't even in the house because I was like ripping and running the streets so much. Uh, there was like multiple there. I think there was like a, almost a week straight where I stayed in my car. Um, and yeah, and then it got to the third month. And I, that's when I had to pay rent. And there was no way I could pay rent and the electric bill. Uh, and so in order to avoid my landlord for that month, I stayed in my car for an entire month. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jesus. But was, what was funny was I would go, I would drive all the way back to the apartment uh, just to like put a money order for like 250, 300, $400 and put it in my landlord's pay box, right? In, for, the, for the rent. And legally in the state of California, as long as a tenant is actively giving money to the landlord and the landlord is accepting it you cannot evict that person no matter no matter even if they only pay a dollar towards their towards their rent like they're still considered a tenant and then they get 30 to 60 days from the notification time that you're being evicted so by that point i was already giving him money so he couldn't serve me any type of eviction notice or whatever because he was accepting money you have to wait 30 to 60 days um i believe it's 60 because we were in like moratorium time, uh, just before moratorium time, which was, you know, basically like you can't evict people during the pandemic or whatever. Mm. Um, so he was like, all right, well, I'll give you 60 days or whatever. Um, and this was before I had gotten a new roommate. So this was like still 2019. So this was like before, uh, obviously pre pandemic time. Um, the only reason why I was like, I filed for the moratorium was because I knew I couldn't afford rent for two months. So I was like, all right, whatever, no big deal. Um, then I moved that new crazy guy in there and he stayed for a whole fucking year. That was interesting, but we'll get to that later. Anyway, so I had stayed in that place and in my car for well over two to three months. So this really isn't that bad. Like, oh yeah, the bathtub is great. Oh yeah, no, no, no. The bath, the bathtub is pumping and jumping, my man. Like for real, for real. Like I... I mean, I've always taken baths everywhere I lived. So, like, I always make sure I have a bathtub. Like, I just enjoy taking baths, my man. Like, I don't, that's just something I do. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I got to a point where, like, I was at the lowest of the low and I ordered Chipotle to come to the house. And, bro, I like, I remember the Postmates person knocking on the door and I was like, damn, I'm in the bathtub right now. <laughs> so, I literally just got up. I didn't get a towel or nothing. I just walked clear across my house, opened the front door. I said, thanks, man. Just opened up the door. Grab the bag, and dude is just looking at me because I'm butt ass naked, just dripping in water. I was like, all right, close the door. <laughs> Went right back to the bathtub, unpacked everything, and started eating my Chipotle in the bathtub, man. Like, man. it was just, yeah. No towel I mean, was kind of crazy. I, I, <laughs> what was I supposed to, I mean, what was he going to do? Like, like damn, like, let me, let me slide. Like, fuck out of here, bro. That's not the tip you're trying to get. Um, Anyway, Fair. I mean, I didn't, I don't, I don't really care. Like, this is my fucking apartment. You know what I mean? Like you're dropping something off. Now, if it would, it would have been, you know, a young lady and I would have opened the door like that might've been a different story. Actually, no, it probably would have been the same story. I'm going to be honest. Like I would have oh, yeah. just been like, can I have the bag? Thank you. Bye. Like shut the door. It's, it's bath time. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't care about none of that stuff. So it's never really phased me, bro. I, I, uh, there's been times where, you know, like my girl was over here and like, the postmates will show up and we just got done. You know, we're mid, you know, intercourse, I could say, right? Mid intercourse. And she'd be like, what are you doing? Like, 
you know, put some pants on or whatever. I'm like, baby, I don't give a fuck. I open the door, grab the bag. Thank you. Close the door. Like, you know what I mean? Like I've done it before. Like I don't, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't bother me. You Yo, come into my premises. people is crazy. Yeah, you come into my premises. I'm within, I'm within the threshold of my, my apartment basically. Now, if you step in here and I don't have no clothes on, now we have a problem. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, man, that shit has never, that shit has never bothered me. You know, I'm pff, luckily I'm blessed. So, you know, I'm good. <laughs> okay. But yeah, this isn't, this is by far like not the worst situation I've ever been in. Uh, whenever I wanted, when I was for, for the first three days, I was going to, um, Starbucks to use the Wi-Fi and stuff like that. And for the free air conditioning, um, just because, you know, this week in LA, it's been a hundred degrees almost every single day. So, you know, chilling in this tiny ass apartment, no ventilation, you know what I mean? It was, it was getting, it was getting to be a bit much, but I mean, my, luckily where my apartment is located in the building is it doesn't get very hot. And when it's cold, it doesn't stay that cold in here. Like, so my apartment is probably 10 degrees cooler than it is outside. So, you know, nice. we, we chilling. Yeah, w. it's not really a big deal. Yeah, big W. Um, it's one of the only reasons why I won't leave this place. Uh, just because, you know, it's kinda, it kind of feels like my artist factory. You know what I mean? Like, when I come in here, I'm forced to either play games or work. Like, I only have two options. So, um you know, it's just been, it's just been pretty chill. It's, it's given me a lot of time to like sit and think. Um, I've been reading my various books that I have, bro. It feels like I'm in prison. Like, <laughs> like this is well, what prisoners feel like. Like I've been, more, well, I mean, I, more maybe, or less. maybe to a lesser extent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah more or less. I mean, you can, I you can like, go outside. You can go yeah. Do yeah cause I can go outside. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's something that's a little different, but you you get what I mean. The the yeah. sentiment is very close. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cause all I've been doing is reading, working out, and taking baths. You know what I mean? They don't take they don't let you take baths in prison. So True. at least not ones that you want to take. Yeah, the uh, bubble bath. Not the bubble <laughs> bath. Now I got these new bath bombs that are lavender scented. Oh man, yo. <laughs> you bought bath bombs for this? Bro, no, I already had bath bombs oh. for this. What are you talking about? I was I was prepared long before this even happened. Oh. Okay. So um Ooh. You know, it's, it's given me a lot of... I mean, I was already kind of like on my hermit type shit for the past few weeks. Um, today was the first day I watched porn in three weeks. Oh, I'm going to have to so, touch that. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's all good. It's all, it's all good. Uh, you don't have to. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, today was... And today was also the first day I got back on Twitter. So, that would explain <laughs> Um, because I am planning to email GTA this week. Um, uh, oh, it's been, uh, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a month since I talked. Cause she, she sent me an email last month and I was like, Oh, I'm not, I'm not ready to respond to this or whatever. Like I'm not at a place to do it. Um, I'm, I've been feeling like back and forth, like the, for the past two weeks, like good about it. Some days horrible about it. Other days, other days I'm like, why don't I just email her right now? But you know, like. Uh, when's Tuesday? Tuesday is going to be my kind of like check-in day to see how I feel about it. And uh, I've talked to my coach and my therapist and they're like, well, if you feel like uh, you're healed enough to be able to do something like that. And I was like, all right, bet. Cool, cool, cool. So um, I also had a friend decide she wanted to no longer be friends with me because I wouldn't. Well, you know, maybe we should talk about that on the Patreon portion. Anyway, so <laughs> I thought this whole thing was Patreon. Okay. No, 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 no. This is this is this is the show, baby. This is the show. What are you talking oh, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, why? What's the problem? Oh, nothing. Yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, I had a friend decide she didn't want to be friends with me anymore. Uh, so I haven't really been boohooing about that. I'm like, okay, it's like it basically is my my last friend. So. Uh, you know, I have very, very few that aren't located in a different time zone. Basically, I think I only have like maybe one or two that are in the same state, but they like have significant others or they have kids or they moved away. Like, so it's just kind of like me by myself for mm. like a while now. And I was really thinking about it. I was like, damn, is this like, am I lonely? <laughs> like, <laughs> I had to like genuinely like sit and think about it. I was like, damn, like, do I feel lonely? And I was like, nah, not, not really. Like if I wanted to talk to somebody, I could just go outside and like 
have a conversation with somebody, no problem. Like I can make new friends, no problem. But it's just like there's work involved in that. And I was just like, uh, I don't I kind of don't want to. Like the other day I went out with uh, one of my other homeboys and this was on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah Tuesday. And we had went to uh, this bar over in Little Tokyo and we were kind of kicking it. And I saw this one girl and she had a, a Jack Skellington tattoo. And my boy was like, damn, like, like that's a dope ass tattoo. I was like, why don't you go tell her? Why don't you go compliment her? Like, why don't you go tell her it's a, it's a nice tattoo? He goes, yeah, but women don't want to be approached. Like, I can't, I can't do that. I was like, nah, women don't want to be approached when you're trying to approach them. Like, just go tell her she has a nice tattoo. And he goes, nah, I don't, nah, that's, that's probably not, you know. Like, she's probably just chilling. She's probably here with her friends and blah, blah, blah. So I get up and I'm, you know, pretending to walk over to the bar and then I pretend to need to tie my shoe. And so, like, I, I, like, get down and I, like, adjust my shoe and I kind of, like, look up and she's standing right there and I see her forearm. And I was like, oh, oh, holy shit. I was like, that's a really nice tattoo. Like, where'd you get it done? And she goes, oh, this thing? I got this done, like, five years ago and blah, 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 blah. I was like, oh, my God, that, that's, that's awesome. Like, you know, and I'm just risen it up you know what i'm saying i was like oh mm. me and my me and my boy are just hanging out like are you here with anybody you know can i buy you a drink or something and she goes oh i'm just here with my my two other friends and like their other her other friends were like i don't want to say they were better looking than her but like damn <laughs> anyway so i was like i was like oh yeah yeah let me get my boy to come over and uh so i was like waving over to him and he's like what did she say about the tattoo and he said that shit mad loud and i was like I was like, bro, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Fucking up the riz. So I'm standing there talking with her and we get up to the bar and, you know, I was like, oh, what are you, what are you and your friends drinking? I'm, I'll, I'll pay for the first round. And, uh, because you know, it's still happy hour time, you know, like $7 drinks, not really a big deal. It's, you know, seven, 14, 21. Oh, I'm getting some butt cheek. Um, so, you know, cause I'm not buying my boy a drink, you know, I've already, I've already got my drink in my hand. So as I'm like getting these drinks for her, I was like, oh, you know what? Let me let me go invite my friend over to the table. And she was like, well, I want my friends to meet you first. And I was like, oh, OK. So I like go over to the table and her and her friends are talking. And they were like, oh, this is Jay. I, I met him, blah, 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 blah. He likes tattoos. And so this other girl's like, oh, my God, you're into tattoos. I was like, yeah, you know, no big deal. I have like, you know, two. And she, <laughs> and she goes, uh, you know, she starts explaining like, some of her tattoos and like where she had them. I was like, Oh, okay. That's, that's dope. Uh, my homie is actually like a tattoo artist and blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm trying to, trying to riz to get the homie come over. And she was like, Oh, that, that guy over there. And like, I look over at him. I'm like, yeah, yeah, come on over. And she goes, Oh, okay. Damn. And, and the oh, girl goes, okay. So do you want to see my tattoos? And I was like, her friend was like, do you want to see my tattoos? I was like, I was like, yeah, sure. Like, she goes, okay, so I have one here on my shoulder. I have w one here on my thigh. And then I have four other ones. I was like, okay, so where are the four other ones? She was like, there's one near my pussy and then two on both of my tits. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> and now when you, when you escalate a situation like that with a, with a gentleman that you don't really know, it really is just like, hmm, you shared this information in front of your friends. Hmm. You either are the open one or you're trying to shoot some shot. I don't know. I couldn't really tell. So like my boy comes over. I was like, oh yeah, this is my boy. Uh, let's call him, you know, for the sake of his identity, let's call him Jeff. Right. So I'm, I'm introducing him to my boy, Jeff. Like, yeah, you know, he's an up and coming tattoo artist. You know, he used to be a street artist, blah, 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 blah. All things he has never done. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> as I'm like telling, telling the first girl who like invited me over, she was just like, Oh, do you think your friend can get us some drinks? Yo. He's getting done filthy. <laughs> I was just like, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a I'm gonna go with him, you know, like so that way I can I can get my drink or whatever. And then the third girl, she goes, Oh no, he can get it. It's it's fine. He seems like, you know, he's pretty capable. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on? And I, I look at him and he's looking at me. He's like, bro, what? What is what's going on? I was like, I was like, well, why don't why don't one of you go one of you girls go and help him, you know, so that way he can carry everything. And they were like, they looked at each other like dead quiet, damn, like, like just for a cool minute. And it's almost like when I looked at them and they were looking at each other, it's like each one of them was drawing straws <laughs> mentally. 
<laughs> and I was like, I was like, uh, you know what? Me and my boy just gonna go. We're we're gonna go get the drinks, right? So I and they were like, oh, okay, you know, like, you know, we'll see you when you get back. So I I walk over with him. I was like, all right, bro, we gotta leave. We gotta leave. And he goes, why? Like we're risen them up. I said, we. <laughs> What do you mean? We is we? crazy. <laughs> I was like, nigga, you are, you are dumb. You are not paying attention. Mm. So anyway, we're like walking towards the bar area, and they have like this um spiral staircase, spiral staircase to go up to this like upper upper platform area where like there's like most of the seating because everything else is like either bar stools or standing. So I was like, okay, you know, uh, we're probably not gonna go back. <laughs> And he goes, nah, man, like, I'm, I'm uh, like, I'm looking at this one girl and she kind of feeling it like this, uh, the girl who basically was like, Hey, I have all of these like body part tattoos. Right. And, mm. and I was like, Oh, you mean the blonde girl? He goes, yeah. You know, I think she's feeling me. I was like, okay. <laughs> 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 okay. And so I was like, look, let's do this. I'll go get the drinks. Right. I know what they're drinking. What do you want? He's like, Oh, they, you know, just give me something nice. Like a rum and Coke. I was like, Dog, you're not 57. You're not getting a rum and coke. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, go, go back and just entertain the girls for a little bit. Tell them some jokes. Tell them, you know, about, you know, what it's like to be an up and coming tattoo artist. Make some shit up. Like, try it. So I, I'm standing in the line for the bar and I look over my left shoulder and he had, a, he had already made it back to the table. And I see whatever he's talking about. One girl has literally got her elbow on, on the table. And her palm pressed up against her face. Like oh. she is just, she's, she's just, just not, not into it. it, bro. Yeah. And I, as I'm looking, I see this guy using big gestures with his hands and all this other shit. I'm like, doing my boy, what are you doing right now? Like, I can't even. So I already know this is, this is going to be a dud. And I know this line is going to be about like 10 minutes long. Right. And so I'm standing here and I'm, look, I'm glancing every now and then. And I see him doing more and more motions and him trying to like, talk to the girl with you know the blonde girl or whatever and he's like trying to do like little gestures and stuff like that to her and like trying to like touch her hand and interact with her and she's like uh -huh, uh -huh. like she's just not having it so you know what i just i walk back over i leave the line i'm like i was like hey you know jeff um hey man i need you to give me a ride bro um you know my my girl is actually really in trouble right now and you drove uh so i gotta go and the girls are like wait, you have a girlfriend? I was like, yeah, you know, like, and he's my, he's my designated driver, you know, cause you know, I'd be getting way too lit and stuff, you know? And so, and so we're, we're leaving and he goes, bro, what's, what's, what's going on? Like, I, I thought we were, you know, I thought, I thought they was feeling us. I thought we were trying to take him back to the crib. I said, look, Jeff, my man, um, I wasn't feeling the conversation and I was on the other side of the room. So, uh, you know, let's just, let's just chalk it up to, you know what? It was a bad night, my boy. It was a bad night. Um, <laughs> so that was that experience. And that really kind of put me in a place of just like, damn, I really miss my girl <laughs> because I don't, I do not want to be out here fucking just starting up basic conversations with people and then thinking that like, Oh shit! I want to interact and I want to talk to this guy because l let me tell you right now, none of these none of these women were fucking interesting. Not a single one of them has seen uh, a single Batman movie. Uh, not a single one of them likes Legos. Uh, <laughs> Marvel movies, you can forget about it. Like you know what I mean? Like, and I just I just ascertain that you know just in small bits and pieces and scenarios. It's one thing when you talk to a girl about Halloween and what she wants to dress up as, you know, for for Halloween. Uh, anytime I hear the word slutty come out of a girl's mouth, I'm like, hmm. Interesting. <laughs> very interesting. Right. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> indeed. So I just thought that was very interesting. And now that I've reached a point of like realizing what my situation with GTA was uh, and what that was like and, um, you know, I really don't I really don't like it out here, bro. I really don't like it out here. You don't like the it's dating just, market? Nah, nah, man. Nah. Especially when you have like a little bit of money. Like when you have a little bit of like moderate money and you say, let me buy you and your friends drinks. And that automatically is an invitation to like talk to the rest of her friends like openly. And like her friends are pretty good looking. But like the one girl I was talking to, like 
she was like she was like a four and like i was very invested in like hmm, let me talk to this girl but like her other two friends are like so tell us about this like what do you think of like how often do you come here is this really fun for you like i'm just okay you so. just phoning it in and it was off some shit you didn't even want to deal with bro on some shit i ain't even want to deal with bro i didn't realize like you should have let honestly, jeff handle it I, I tried. I tried to sick I tried to get Jeff to really just be in on it and like him to like get pseudo riz off of me, but it was he just not the vibes were fucked up already. The the vibes were definitely I mean he came out like I was dressed casually. He he dressed like he was out here trying to like stunt on somebody. Uh Brody had like this this giant fucking jacket on like he was, you know, a pimp in nineteen ninety nine. Uh it was a great looking jacket though, like you know, it's a two thousand dollar jacket or whatever, but I'm like, bro, like, I just, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I was trying to think about it. I was like, what are you trying to substitute this jacket for? Like, like you're not gonna fuck any of these women, so I don't understand what this jacket is overcompensating for, my boy. Uh, it, it's not that hard to be funny. Like, it's not that difficult. So I was just, I was just confused. Like, mm. what was his goal when he said on this jacket? Now. Also, it's 92 degrees outside, 7 p.m. What you doing with this big-ass jacket on, my boy? Any man wearing a jacket in California is instantly suspect. <laughs> suspect. Uh, and it wasn't like a fashionable light jacket either. It was like this big fur fucking thing. Man. Anyway, so, you know, God bless to my boy, but it was just not happening. It was just not happening. Um, you know what? I, I, I hate to say this, but, you know, I'm on record saying it. I just miss my girl, man. I miss my girl. I miss being at home. I miss French toast on Saturday mornings. I miss uh, tequila Friday nights and mimosa mornings. That shit is fire, bro. That shit is mm. fire. Uh, I uh, Legos every Sunday. Uh, catching up to to Snowfall or The Shy every week. Um, you know, like like good shit. Good shit in my life. So you know, now I'm just out here. Uh, I don't feel like a lonely island. But, like, I'm definitely an island that is not to be, like, landed upon. You know what I mean? Like, mm. even when I go to... And so, you know, ever since I got the new haircut, you know, and the, the cologne started coming in this week, right? So I got three different ones from... Uh, I'm not going to say the company because they, they haven't responded to me about a possible uh, partnership with our podcast. So, you know. Anyway, oh, they sure. send... Um, yeah, they send very large samples of of different scents and stuff like that for very very cheap i got three of them for seven dollars and 62 cents for the first month right um, um amazing amazing Ooh, damn that shit's i'm I'm smelling it right now my boy this shit is well, this shit hot? some of these are fire some of these are fire actually matter of fact let me tell you which i'm gonna tell you which scent it is that's my favorite uh this one is called harlem nights by chris collins it is mm. a smooth dark daring exuberant fragrance it's a combination of uh, auroras flowers sandalwood amber musk and rum mm. that that shit hits that shit smells like walking into a ca uh, a log cabin with the fire going and you know the the the, the brown fur uh rug you know what i mean the mm. fucking bear pelt type shit yeah yeah that's what this smells like it smells like ambiance, okay. my boy. This shit is, this shit hits. So I was in Little Tokyo yesterday, and it was like 94 degrees, and I had went to my favorite bookstore, and like I walked past this girl, and she was like, she's like, oh wow, that that smells so nice. And it's not like she was saying it to me. She could have said anything. I just like rizzed it up. I just turned around and I was like, why? Thank you. That's my new scent. And she goes, <laughs> uh, okay. Like she was kind of disgusted by it. So I go and I buy like three figures and I'm leaving the store and she goes, oh, so it is you. I was like, okay, bye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and now in my head, that seemed like it was a positive interaction, right? Yeah. <laughs> Some girl with her boyfriend who won't buy her any anime merch or anything like that. And, you know, the, un the unspoken, you know, just walks in and walks out and you're like, oh my God. Like, you know what I mean? Like. Mm. I now feel like a you know with the with the haircut and everything and the you know I've been working out like crazy. I mean you know I be getting looks. Time. Yeah, I be getting looks, bro. I be getting looks, and so you know if I combine that with actually like wanting to 
like pursue something with somebody, bro, I'd be dangerous. You know, I'd be dangerous. But I just have no, I have no earthly desire for any of that stuff. City boys, we up. Yeah, yeah, no, city boys, we sitting still. So okay. Yeah, man, I'm. I don't know. I'm just not really into it. Uh, Oh, okay, yeah. We got to go back to depressed boys. Um, honestly, I, I feel like representing the depressed boys is way better than, than, you know, being part of city boys. So, you know, oh, okay. I, I, I feel like the homies need representation, uh, you know, because depressed boys is where it's at, man. You know, we're so in touch with like everything that's going on. Like, you know, really about some of us are really about self-development. You know what I mean? Like, that's why we truly depressed. You know, we try to fix the depression. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to be out here like boohoo, uh, you know, what was me forever. So, you know, and uh, honestly, I had I, I've had some real, real good breakthroughs this past couple of weeks, man. So, you nice. know, I'm feeling like, you know, I'm in a completely different space. I'm ready to get uh, back on back on content creation this week. You know, uh, electricity permitted. Um, yep. I have some stuff planned for The Last of Us. I have a Last of Us sketch planned. Um, some like TikTok stuff that I had planned. But really, it's just like Instagram reels. Um, cause when I was posting regularly, my Instagram blew up from like, I think I had like 1300 followers and I'm at 1800 now. Um, so, so that was from like the Gideon video, uh, the, the Patreon videos that we made, um, the Patreon shorts that were made, um, w? you know, for the podcast and everything. Yeah. The big P one, the big P one did really well on Instagram. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah, I can't believe yeah. that. I that believe shit it. was so dumb. Because <laughs> in the in the in the comments, all I saw was these bitches over and over again, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I'm like this is <laughs> this is actually like this is real life, bro. So, <laughs> hey man, you gonna fuck around and become an icon? I'm telling you, I'm telling you before you even know it. Like you just you just doubting your power level right now. I That's guess all. I didn't even. I just said it. Like I didn't. Well, see, I didn't yeah, even, yeah. You asked me to do something. I was like, "Well, fuck it." I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I don't care. Yeah. Man, now you're seeing the best. You're seeing the best of what can happen, my man. You need to you need to do it more. Do it more often. <laughs> you see what okay. the fuck happening. So okay, you know. okay. But uh, yeah. So that was this week, man. And now I'm sitting in here uh, in the dark, uh, fan blowing. You know, about to get in the bathtub after this podcast. Uh, nice. Yeah, I think um, there was one other thing I needed to update. So I bought uh. A book by Jordan Peterson uh, the other day, so that'll that'll be coming in. And I also bought the Forty Eight Laws of Power. I already owned the audio book for. But what was the other one I got? Oh, the Four Agreements. So I'm gonna be reading that this week. Um, I've also been catching up on trying to finish the Alchemist and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, man, this 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 life of disconnecting has been great. Uh, the only setback I had was, like I said at the beginning, you know is uh, I started watching corn again and um there you go you know I wasn't yeah I wasn't really feeling good about it because to be honest and this is just me being really real right this is like we don't need to put this on the patreon just because it's raw honesty right now I don't like watching corn because I don't like seeing people do what I used to like to do if that makes any sense <laughs> that shit that shit makes me mad jealous you, bro you like, hating you I'm hating, hating bro I'm hating real real bad because it's it's one thing when you have a um when you have a significant other, right? Yeah. When you have a significant other that enjoys doing shit that they do in corn, like she genuinely desires these things, bro. Bro, bro, bro. <laughs> I don't want to see no other girls do this. Like I don't care. <laughs> like <laughs> Damn. Like I just genuinely do not care. Like even if another girl came along in my life and was just like, "Yeah, I want to do all that shit." It's just like, "But you're not her." <laughs> I'm a hitter with the Drake. You not her, like you never mm. gonna be her. Like it just it is what it is. So you know, I don't know. Uh, I also had a conversation with my therapist this week, and the reason why I'm talking about all this is because it's it's gonna make sense when I get to the end. Trust me. Um, I was having a conversation with my therapist about where is the line between where is the where do we draw the line between uh, when you deeply deeply love and care about somebody and obsession. And she's like, my brother, (laughs) you are definitely in the obsession portion. (laughs) And I was like, is that necessarily bad? And she was like, you know, uh, just because you were conditioned that way. Like, really, if we if we take it back, 
if we take it real, 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 real back, I blame Usher for this, and I'll tell you why. Because Usher and other R&B artists and stuff like that, they really made a lot of songs about, like, you know, nurturing and worshiping your woman and all this other stuff. And she's supposed to be the highest of the high, you know what I mean? Like, you're supposed to desire your queen and worship her in the ground that she walks on. Really, R&B songs got me real fucked up because I was thinking that's, like, that's actually what, what you know, like, like what actual love is you know what i mean like like damn like somebody's gonna devote themselves to you like that shit must be nice and then i also have a friend who's uh she got proposed to last week which is honestly crazy because they've been together for three years and i i remember there was at a one point in time where she was like questioning if she wanted to date him or not i was like nah this guy seems he gives me good vibes he seems like a good dude because i met him once uh, like, I think it was their second date or something like that. And she was like having, in, you know, like questions about him or whatever. And I was like, nah, it's, it's like the love song says, you know, you know, when you know, I don't remember what love song I was quoting, but whatever it was had me all the way turned the fuck up. So, uh, I was already thinking of like, oh, Tyrese made me this way. Usher made me this way. You know, various R and B artists and shit. They're to blame for why I'm like this. So now, oh, okay. you know, I, I, I hope, and I'm going to speak this into existence. I, I hope, you know, when GTA comes back or, you know, if she doesn't, she doesn't, you know what I mean? Like we have to be accepting of that. That's cool. Um, but the next girl, you know, is definitely going to get, she's going to get locked down within the first two years. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. Cause I had the opportunity with GTA and like, we, we kind of like laughed about it and we were like, huh, 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 what if we did? And it was just like, she said yes. And I was like, oh, but cause you know, we went on a date one time and it was like this food market and there was a, there was a church, like not a church, but like a chapel right across the street. And I was like, what if we he, he, ha, ha. And she was like, he, he, ha, ha. Yeah, sure. Of course. Like, why would I not? And like that should have been the moment where I was like, "Yeah, I probably, I probably should have." <laughs> you know what I mean? But you should have figured it I, out. Like I said, yeah, yeah, I just figured it out. I mean, but R and B songs made me this way, man. It was R and B songs. Now I wish I I had grown up with the quote unquote R and B songs that we have now, which is basically like, "Fucking bitches tell they nut and then keep going." You know what I mean? Like, oh jeez, that's I mean that's what. That's what a lot of R&B songs are about right now, you know? Make her bust, make her square, you know, type B. But I don't know, man. I don't know. I feel like as I get older, I'm just learning lear more and more things that I don't want to learn. That have just been like, wow, where was this one? two years ago? Where was this a year ago? Mm. I needed this desperately. And then it'd be like very simple shit. Like I was talking to my therapist about this and I told her, I said, you know, uh, had I known these things like a year ago, I would have, you know, chosen a different route to go. And she was like, do you think that would have changed anything? I was like, I can't think that far because these things haven't happened. Like, even if I had this information, at least there would have been a chance. And she goes, okay, I respect that. And now I'm going to tell you one thing. Uh, for anybody looking to like get a therapist or like thinking about counseling or of any kind, you have to be very careful about like when you pick your therapist or even if you get to pick your therapist or counselor at all uh because as much as i like my therapist this bitch is mad annoying uh because everything has to be a fucking biblical analogy with her like and by biblical i don't mean like out of the bible i mean it has to be like this grandiose fucking what if this happened scenario for her to really hammer home uh the type of shit that i'm trying to understand and it's like yeah, I understand what you're saying, but you didn't have to take it to that extreme. Like, you don't have to go that far. Like, like, oh, if a, if a lion roars, does, does that make other animals nervous? Like, no shit, bitch. Like, what the fuck? Like, why would you, why would you even ask me that? Like, what type of dumbass question is that? But <laughs> anyway, all this to wrap around to say, you know what, man, this week has been very interesting. <laughs> this week, this month, this year, uh, you know, not that long ago, I was just like, hey, you know, I have a career in front of me. You know, I got a relationship in front of me. Everything's about to be all good. And it seems like I keep going through these two-year cycles of like, one year will be really good, and then another year will be dog shit. And then the year after that is going to be dog shit, and then you'll have a year of like come up and recovery. And then it'll go right back to, so two years on, two years off. But the two years off are always back to back. Like, Mm. Like they never escape each other. It's never one year on, one year off. One year on, one year off. It's it's always on, off, off, on. <laughs> so I don't see any type of recovery until uh, 
middle of next year. We'll see. Damn, middle of the next year. In middle of next, <laughs> probably late next year, like right around November of next year. We gonna have some type of uh, we gonna have some type of turn up. So, city boy year. C- no, no, we're not doing city boy. Nah, man, I'm gonna encourage the city boys, but I'm not doing any more city boy activities. To be honest with you, mm. um, I just don't have the desire to. You know what I mean? Like mm. I'm I'm too tired. Um, I just want to come home and play with Legos, man. That's it. I just want to come home, play with Legos, watch Adventure Time, eat French toast. That's it. Mm. So, uh, unless you're you're the female trying to match that, I don't think so. And then there was one female trying to match that, but I don't want you. You know who you are. I don't want you. Oh. I, I I made the decision. I don't want you. Mm-mm. No, thank you. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I'll have to talk about that on the Patreon. But you know, some some people just you know. Imagine somebody puts you in the friend zone for a very, very long period of time, right? Yeah. And they plotting on you. It turns out that they, they come out and they tell you, oh, I've been plotting on you for years. I was just dating these other people just to, like, fill my time until, like, the time was right and you were at your most depressed. This bitch actually said this shit to me. And I was like... Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, that yeah, That is a man. crazy statement. Yeah, <laughs> you know, these women are predators out here, bro. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this right now. When you, when you funny... And you finally got some middle class money and, you know, your credit getting better and, you know, your skin is clear and your, your trapezius muscles are bulging out of your medium sized shirt. Trust me, my, my boy. Trust me. They. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but maybe it's because I'm 30 and the women attracted to me are either 26 up or 35 under. So I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I don't know what it is that I'm giving off, but you know, right now I just I feel more confident in myself than ever. You know what I mean? Like I could go outside and I could just, you know, do some crazy shit and just be okay. You know what I mean? That's probably why I'm like so eager to like make more content because I'm very excited about the 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 turns and the different things that are and the different approaches that are gonna, you know, come forward. Uh, we have plenty of stuff to talk about, plenty of video games that are getting ready to come out, uh, lots of YouTube drama. Andrew Tate is about to get his ass beat by KSI. Like, you know, it's, it's about to be great. I can't wait. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. W. Speaking of, um, yeah, yeah, big W. Speaking of, um, are you, you're not keeping up with like influencer boxing, are you? Uh, I did watch this, the matches that KSI had recently, uh, the one with Fuzzy versus Deji. And all that that whole card, I watched it. It was pretty cool. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, man. I love it. I love this the influencer boxing space. Um, it feels almost as if it's like very reminiscent of like the YouTube rapper space. Remember when everybody was like launching diss tracks at each other all the time and shit like that? Oh yeah. Like I feel like this is in an in a, an evolved <laughs> form of this. Except now, you know, niggas are able to actually fucking physically touch each other. It's like, oh, if you were talking shit on the internet, like. It's definitely possible. Like we can, we can connect. We can, we can get a flight. We can get a boxing ring. You know what I mean? Uh, not everybody is gonna make money off of it, but I mean, you know, it's it's definitely possible. Uh, I mean, if I had a problem with any content creators right now, I'd be like, "Yo, head to the ring. Mm. Stick it to the ring for real." Like, you know what I mean? I mean, they couldn't be like a couple hundred thousand subs or something like that. Like, I'd actually, you know, now that I think about it, I probably would. I'd probably fight somebody like Burleasy. I'd, I'd fight Burleasy for sure. Um, I don't have a problem with him. I just, you know, I think that would be a good card. Um, some random nobody versus Burleasy. Yeah, sure. Mm. Uh, same with I'm Dante. Sure, why not? Corey Kenshin. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, I think that would be fun. That'd give me at least 10,000 subs, finally. Uh, <laughs> God, I'm dumb. Anyway, um, but I thought it was very interesting, man. Uh, he took on two fights, I think, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, congratulations to KSI. He beat both of those <laughs> children, from what I heard. Um, yeah, he beat one one guy and then a boxer. I forgot their name. Yeah, he's just getting the dust off, from what I heard. Yeah, I mean, those matches were pretty interesting. All, all The whole card was good. I'm not going to lie. like That was really well-produced. The matches were pretty good to look at, like, from a perspective. I mean, most of these guys are obviously not, like, real boxers, except for the guy KSI fought, but, um, I mean, they did, they all did pretty well. I don't have anything bad to say about it. You now, trying to see, uh, Jake versus KSI, or? 
Um, <clears throat> I don't think so. Only because I don't think. I think Deji versus Jake would probably be a little better. Really? Uh, Even rematch. though Deji hasn't hasn't won a single fight. No, he he won the he won his last one. He won the yeah he, he won, won the one Fuzzy. yesterday. Yeah. Not yesterday, but the last last card. Yeah, that he wasn't lost yesterday. To, that was that wasn't yesterday. That was forever ago. That was like ten days ago, I mm. think. But yeah, I, I think a rematch between Deji and Jake Paul. Now that Deji is kind of, uh, you know what I mean. He's kind of got more experience. I think that'd be cool. I think Jake's gonna wreck him though. Um, Jake's a, Jake, I, I was watching uh, Jake's last two last two fights. He's he's definitely gotten his his flow of of how he likes to fight and dance and move about the ring because I actually watching his first fight against Deji compared to his most recent fight. I'm like, I don't know, man. Uh, Deji's getting a hang of it, but he's not anywhere near where Jake is at. Uh, so I don't know. I, I haven't seen a lot of Jake Paul stuff. I only saw like one fight with the first, uh, Jake versus Deji fight. That's the one I saw. I haven't really kept up with him because I, I generally don't watch his stuff. But I mean, he might brother. be he I might be it. really good. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of a monster, bro. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Hyper aggressive, hyper hyper aggressive, and a dude. I think he's what 270, 280. Yeah, he's lean, quick. Whoo! I would not want to fight him. But then oh, again, yeah. he's like he's like six four, so you know, I'll have to shoot him. Um. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting either of the Paul brothers. That's not. That's not happening. Um, I wouldn't even meet the weight. Shit, oh yeah. To be honest with you, yeah, it's just it's not happening. Um, but I do want to see. Uh, the reason why I bring it up is because I do want to see uh Andrew Tate in the ring. I kind of, I kind of want to. Um, wasn't he a professional kickboxer? Yeah, he was. But uh, I've seen, I've watched a, a few of his matches. Um, not that great. Not that quick, not that nimble. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say he wasn't wasn't top of his class at all. Um, just from the research that I've done, I don't think uh, I think KSI probably wouldn't have that that many problems with him. But now here's the thing. Here's the thing that that I think the conversation needs to be had. Um, and this was talked about on uh, Logan Paul's Im Impulsive, uh, which actually let me see if I can pull up the clip. It's in the uh philip the franco show episode hold on let me pull that up actually and then stream that for the you have the the desktop audio ready to go right uh yeah i can put it on okay hold on um hang on one second let me pull this and then i'm gonna play the clip so that way we can have that in the episode let's see Okay, so um, essentially on his podcast, Logan Paul talked about um, bigging up Andrew Tate essentially by giving him an additional platform uh, to be able to speak on. Um, and I'm going to play a clip from the Philip DeFranco show, so uh, I think we should be okay for copyright because uh, I don't think Phil flags people, um, at least not like that. Um, and, a, and a very interesting conversation has uh, come up. Because if KSI fights Andrew Tate, does that then revitalize his his kind of audience to be like, see, you can't you can't keep Tate down. And it and Logan Paul actually makes a very interesting point in not only this clip, but in the full podcast as well, um, which I'd have to find the clip. So uh, let's just play this. Philip DeFranco explains it a lot more, uh, a lot better than I do. So you and get paid sort of way, but rather a. I think you should go die in a dark corner, sort of way. The shit that Andrew Tate is saying will have a ripple effect much more dangerous than you can imagine because his narrative is truly hateful. His rhetoric has extreme negative energy in it, and it will affect impressionable young people in a way that will not show until years from now. 
and it is dangerous. And just in case you've ignored the news cycle, uh, Andrew Tate, of course, blew up over the past few months with viral clip after viral clip online. Some of it is like general hustle culture motivational bullshit, but really the thing that has gotten the biggest spotlight are the uh, completely violent misogynistic messages he's put out there. I think sexist alpha bro crap and then multiply it by a hundred. You know, with him, there was this debate of what do you do about a guy like this and his influence? You just trust other influencers to challenge him and that somehow is gonna make him smaller or do you limit his influence at a social media level? And with that, we actually ended up seeing major social media companies responding by banning him though that really hasn't changed anything because there's still a whole army of fan accounts on all these platforms resharing his content anyway. And while most recently we're seeing the likes of Logan Paul speaking out against Andrew Tate, we saw Logan's brother Jake actually kind of supporting him, tweeting, I don't roll with Andrew Tate, may KO his ass out in the ring one day soon, but I roll with freedom of speech. With him then sharing a link to a video that Andrew Tate uploaded regarding his social media bans. You've also now, before we go any further, I think this is very interesting. Uh, number one, because uh, Jake saying what he's saying about Andrew Tate and freedom of speech and all that. But Plank, you and I know, and we're, we're advocates for this. Yes, True. freedom of speech is great and everything. But freedom of speech doesn't really mean anything when you need the approval of these giant media corporations and you have to follow their rules. You want to desperately reach more and more people and these are the tools that you need to, in order to do that, in order to make large amounts of money, in order to reach large amounts of people, you should probably follow their rules, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So let's, uh, let's watch the rest of the clip here because I think even Logan addresses something like that. Hold on. So separately had absolutely massive creators like KSI seeming to challenge Andrew Tate to a fight, which is in no way supporting that person's message, but you have people saying fighting him would still give him a ton of visibility. And that's actually something that Logan Paul, who is also a friend and business partner with KSI, spoke on. I don't feel like platforming this guy. I don't feel like giving him the blessing of being my dance partner in the ring, especially after the social media platforms have made it very clear how they feel about this guy, right? And, and, and I would even, I would even, I would even um, put a little call out here to like fellow creators and even JJ, like you want to replatform this guy? Anyone you want to have him on your shows? You want to, you want to give him another opportunity to speak and, 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 and spread his agenda. But Logan also diving into the freedom of speech argument and the role of social media companies, right? Essentially saying that if you think Tate and his message deserve to be spread, but are upset that it doesn't fly on, let's say YouTube or Instagram too bad. Freedom of speech. Go for it, brother. You can say whatever you want. Go in the courtyard in the mall, Scream stand the on a fucking table and Absolutely. say whatever you want. But when you are now at the mercy of, you know, um, an organization that has brought you the visibility that you so desperately seek, and now you want to not play by the rules, like, that's just not going to work. But Logan also asking if it's violence, if it's racism or sexism, at what point do you look at someone with a massive following spreading dangerous ideas and put it to an end? So where's your line in the, in the sand? Do we want to let keep Andrew Tate keep doing this before his subscribers of little f***ing TikTok schoolboys start doing negative bad sh to women? So how bad do we want to let it get? When we know when we know where it's going to lead, you know how this ends. With one of his co- So, essentially, that's pretty much it. We don't, we don't need to react to the entire thing, but... Yep. <laughs> You get the point. You know, though. yeah, we, I think we're starting to get the point here. There are very good points being made. Uh, I, I, of course, agree with all of it, but I don't know about this whole giving Andrew Tate a platform to speak his mind thing just if KSI fights him. I don't think now, if KSI <clears throat> wants to have like a, a debate or something with him, then yeah, maybe don't do that. But I don't see the significance of like the harm in, in having a fight with one of the internet's biggest, you know, super villains right now. Um, my thing is, is he, Logan Paul kind of states here that you want to give this guy a platform. He already had a platform. First of all, I don't think, I, I guess replatforming is different, but his message is going to go out either way. It's just, you have to challenge these ideas in order for them to, to really, really go away and you have to get i i guess the the best way to do it is to get people on your side rather than just all right well we're gonna ban him because then you just honestly banning him might have given him more opportunities to say shit mm. or you to think so i think so because now i mean he was already even though the even though the three biggest platforms to put content on have now said he can't be on there yeah, but you these are uh, the, uh, these ideas don't go away if you ban them. That's true. Yeah, the, these ideas have already been prevalent in in society before Andrew Tate. 
and you just and people deciding not to talk about them is not instantly going to fix the problem yeah but you it's can, also it's also the sudden red pilling and stuff like that you know is really popular right now you well it's been I mean? popular like it's, for a while but i mean it's getting it's more popular than ever that's, yeah 100 percent. yeah it's it's getting a, a bigger wave than it already had it's it's increasing every single day and i i mean i get it it's the you know uh kind of the fight back against you know like extreme feminism and you know things are progressing in a way that these people really don't fuck with but yeah it's I also mean, sorry not to cut you off but it's also no, the good. fact that people don't like a lot of these are based on men's issues and when you don't take a look at these men's issues right and you kind of disregard them for other things right it gets to a point where okay well they need to be talked about and they and somebody needs to to give these people or the give these young men what they want and that's like a role model right and andrew tate was that for a lot of these guys because we don't have a lot of positive male role models well i mean andrew tate definitely wasn't one well he's better than anything else you could say right uh yeah only because i I would probably need to do research in that department and be like, oh, this is a person who should be popular. But well, then that's me cherry picking. And that's yeah. like, obviously, that's not how the market works. So, um, I mean, we could go, go and revive Kevin Samuels. You want to try and do that? I, mean, uh, I don't I don't know any black magics or anything like that. So hmm, uh, black magic specifically or or it could be just anything. You know what I mean? OK, any form you of got, magic. Gotcha. Yeah. Nah, he can't. Unfortunately, he can't raise a man back to back from the dead. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, didn't they do that with uh? What, oh, didn't they put Tupac on the? What is that when they had the hologram, the hologram? with Tupac? Yeah, that shit was that's crazy. A little weird. Uh, that shit was. Do you remember uh, that? That shit was crazy. Yeah, I don't. I don't even. But then they didn't do it for the Super Bowl the next year. Like, even though there was multiple Tupac tributes and Snoop Dogg, all of Death Row, like we. Ain't, no Snoop Dogg hologram there, huh? Well, Snoop, Snoop Dogg's alive. <laughs> wow, oh. I actually said that. That's crazy. I met Tupac's. Uh, you oh. know what? Anyway, anyway, did you see? Speaking of, anyway, did you see uh, yeah, this coming out about uh about the game talking about his feelings were hurt about uh about not being included in last year's Super Bowl halftime? Uh, wait, I'm getting some breaking information from DJ Son. The company that made the hologram went bankrupt mysteriously. Mysteriously? Oh. <laughs> Shook Knight must have took his money back. Sorry, can you restate what you just said? No, I don't I don't want to get dangled off a building. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> That's very interesting. So holograms apparently cost tons and tons and tons of money for a multi billion dollar company to uh invest in and try and get Tupac on stage. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, and I think uh, GJ even said there's a Michael Jackson one. Yeah, I think that one's in Vegas, though. I think that one's in Vegas. So performed at the MTV Awards, he's saying. What the fuck? What, what are know, these people doing? Yeah, you know, these companies are know. insane. Yeah, they just want they want uh, the dead people back on stage. I Who's mean, if state? you really think about it, I, I saw. Um, no, 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 you're good. Go ahead. What what is wrong? Are these people like selling their estate or like what are they doing to get these holograms? Uh, the, your family basically leases out your image, I think. <laughs> they lease it. Okay, that, so, that's yeah, what the yeah, estate yeah. does. They go to they go to Blockbuster and they rent it out. Yeah, that's all it is. Jesus. Yeah, he linked a video. All right, let's go ahead and is this. Hold on, we might get some copyright situation with this. So yeah, make don't sure don't play you it. Have it oh yeah, shit! Yeah, I yeah. just played it. I'm gonna have to edit that out. Uh, but basically, you guys didn't know Plank is if Plank is moving to a more full time role now that I'm gone, uh, that I've been gone. So he's actually having to edit the podcast. Which how how have you liked that thus far? Uh, well, I wanted to like get your input because I haven't really started yet. Because oh, you don't say. I, I we didn't get to the the gameplay portion of okay. our lesson, so kind of have to work on that a little later this hologram oh, is sure. weird i'm watching the video yeah this looks weird yeah i'm sure it's probably super strange but um 
anyway, I think that's going to be, I think that's pretty much it for this episode. I, I really don't have anything else, anything wise or anything important to say. I said all I needed to say at the beginning of the podcast. So, um, any, any words of wisdom from, from you, Professor Plank? Um, city boys, we up, man. You know, the vibes, uh, you know what I mean? More shit coming in soon. Mm-hmm. We outside. Thank you, DJ. Yeah, for sure. For sure. About to be a good one. Yeah. Uh, I will say this. Uh, boys, work on your Riz. Mm. Go and go outside. Go have some conversations. It's not that hard. Trust True. me. Trust me. Women are just people, unfortunately. So Wait. <laughs> unfortunately? What do you mean by that? Well, I say that because I worship one that wants nothing to do with me. So. Oh, okay. Anyway, don't listen to me. I'm I'm dumb. I just I make girls laugh and I just sit there quietly. Okay. Anyway, that's pretty much it for for this episode. Plank, you want to do the outro for us? Sure. Uh, hold on, DJ. You got any comments before? Oh yeah, 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 DJ. Any any words of wisdom from you? <laughs> he said no comment because he is high as a kite. Thank you. All right. All right, sir. It'll be stupid. I wonder how stupid. <laughs> DJ, go ahead. Let us know. It can't be that bad. Yeah, it can't be that bad. You're usually a well of wisdom. This guy's going to go into Dude. a rant about how to do taxes. Live your best lives, bro. You only get one. Life, live. You only get one life. Live that shit. Do what you want. Fuck anyone that says you can't. Uh, I don't love. know about that one. I don't know. I don't know about that, that other part, but yeah, yeah, sure, sure. All right, things within you. reason. You could be anything you want, for real. Well, thank you, DJ. We, <laughs> thank you so really, much, DJ, and yeah, thank really you so much for listening to this part of the video. If you fuck with us, make sure to run up the twitters, the twitches, the YouTubes, all that beautiful stuff. Uh. We have a Patreon if you want to listen to that. Patreon.com slash Canon Culture. Listen to us on Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, Google Play, all of that. Peace. We love you.